In this rare World War II period footage, we see the APQ-7 Eagle radar vane antenna attached to the fuselage underside of a B-29 bomber. B-29s attacking targets with this radar were around 22 times more combat effective than bomber sighting targets with their earlier generation APQ-13 radars. The intent of this video is to review characteristics, usage, and the combat effectiveness of the B-29s equipped with the APQ-7 Eagle radar. An overview of the APQ-7 radar is described on this page from a 1953 USAF Historical Studies Division document titled Development of Night Air Operations 1941-1943. The APQ-7 radar was designed for night bombing. It differentiated from the standard APQ-13 or H2X radar bombing system in that it did not provide a 360-degree ground coverage. This image shows the APQ-13 radar antenna and the B-29's radar station from a 1945 radar information file document. The B-29's APQ-13 radar is located under this fairing between the bomb bays. It rotates 360 degrees every 3 seconds and has a range of roughly 100 miles. It is used for navigation and blind bombing. The scope return sweep pan matches the cadence of the antenna by also rotating 360 degrees every 3 seconds. This image shows features of a typical PPI return. The plane's location is at the center of the display. The bomber's heading is on this line. Scope dark zones indicate water, and light zones indicate solid land features. The concentric circles are the distance range lines. The Eagle's radar beam extends 60 degrees in front of the bomber in a fan shape. The Eagle's scope return fidelity is an order of magnitude greater than the older APQ-13 radar set. This higher fidelity allows better terrain and target recognition. Bombers could place 30% of their bombs within 2,000 feet of the aim point. The system allows a 70-mile bomb run to the target, which makes for a less rush bomb run setup versus a standard 33-mile run when radar targeting with the older APQ-13 set. For reference, the 8th Air Forces could only place around 1.2% of their bombs within a half a mile of the aim point during 10 over 10 cloud cover days using the H2X radar system from a 1944 bombing accuracy report. The Eagle radar system installed on a B-17, B-24, and B-25 during pre-production systems testing. It was only combat deployed on the B-29 model. These images show the map coastline contours and the Eagle's radar's 60-degree forward sweep scope returns. The shoreline features on the map match the scope features quite well. In contrast, this image is a 360-degree scope return of the Nagoya Harbor from the older APQ-13 radar. Due to lack of aimpoint recognition clarity, many targets were sighted by the offset blind bombing method, as described in the channel's Pathfinder video. The radar's weight minus a mounting struts equates to 412 pounds from a 1948 National Defense Research Committee document titled Radar Scanners and Radome. Some sources list the weight of the radar system at 1,100 pounds. The antenna's cross-section is 31 inches long and 7.6 inches in height. The antenna dipole dimensions and shape. The dipoles are located here in the antenna. The Army Air Forces procured 963 units in 1944 and 1945, as shown on this table from a 1952 U.S. Army Statistics Procurement Document. Additional specifications of the radar are shown on this page from a 1946 Military Airborne Radar Systems document. It is designed as a high-resolution radar for high-altitude usage. It is 16 feet in length and houses array dipoles in a symmetric airfoil. Cities can be identified at ranges up to 160 miles. Excellent scope resolution is obtained at the cost of a large antenna mounting and limited 60-degree field of view. The wavelength for both the APQ-7 and-13 radars is 3.22 centimeters. These systems are classified as 3-centimeter radars, X-band airborne bombing radars, or microwave radars. The policy of the 20th Air Forces is to equip all B-29s with the APQ-13 radars except the 315th and 316th wings, as discussed in this March 1945 20th Air Forces weekly newsletter. These wings will be equipped with the APQ-7 Eagle radars. This image shows the Eagle radar's crew position with the system indicator shaded, the indicator 60-degree fan-shaped PPI scope, Eagle radar controls on the left, and bombing controls on the right. 
The radar system was tested on B-24s, B-25s, and B-29s during 1943 and 1944, as discussed in this 1961 Development of Airborne Armaments document. Eagle-equipped B-29s were sent on combat missions in May of 1945. Crews indicated the system provided more scope return clarity than any other radar system. The size of the antenna necessitated only B-29s be outfitted with the APQ-7 radars. Since the 315th Wing's bombers were mostly stripped of their defensive armaments except for their tail guns, it would be unwise to attack targets during the day. Bombing altitude was lowered to around 15,000 feet. They were tasked with destroying Japan's remaining oil facilities at night at altitudes around 15,000 feet. This page from a July 1945 21st Bomber Command Air Intelligence Report outlines the results of the 315th's first combat mission. The 315th sent 36 Eagle-equipped radar B-29s to bomb a Japanese oil refinery. These B-29 models were delivered without turrets except for the tail guns. This reduces drag, increases speed, allows a larger bomb load, and increases crew cabin space. These models also incorporated a fuel injection system in lieu of an engine carburetor. The radar scope return is shown here. In the last months of the war, Eagle-equipped B-29s conducted nighttime precision attacks on Japanese oil installations, as discussed in this 1946 World War II radar summary report. They yielded spectacular results. The results similar to the destruction of this naval fueling station from a 1945 Air Victory Over Japan report. As of June 26, 1945, 100 Eagle-equipped B-29s were in theater, as shown on this table from a June 1945 21st Bomber Command weekly newsletter. This table summarizes the Eagle radar-equipped B-29s 15 oil refinery attack missions, including the mission date, location, number of B-29s airborne, total weight of bombs dropped in tons, and bombers lost. The data was extracted from a 1945 21st Bomber Command Combat Mission Statistics document. The missions were characterized as gasoline alley sorties and their locations are shown on this map. The 315th revolutionized nighttime precision pinpoint bombing techniques due to the Eagle radar. In the 15 missions, the unit destroyed all of Japan's remaining oil refineries at the loss of three bombers and 30 crew casualties. The imbalance of results to cost is likely the highest that has occurred in aerial warfare. General LeMay sent a congratulatory message to the 315th after their July 6 mission, which included, You destroyed 95% of the target with only a half-strength force by sighting the target with the APQ-7 radar at night. This is the most successful radar bombing to date. Given the large increase in bombing accuracy of the APQ-7 versus the older APQ-13s, the 8th Air Force has requested outfitting their bombers with Eagle radar as soon as possible, as discussed in this December 15, 1944 memo from General Spots to General Giles. The 8th is struggling to precision bomb top priority targets. Smoke and debris obscures the target, limiting visibility. These targets are also costly, and H2X radar has given poor results due to poor radar returns. We believe the APQ-7 high-resolution radar may solve our poor bombing accuracy problems. The oil targets at Luma are defended by more AA guns than Berlin. The APQ-7 radar-equipped bombers would allow more accurate bombing results with fewer losses. Make it a priority to get the Eagle radar over to the European theater now. The air war is a radar war. We are willing to pay for the bomber changeover price to the Eagle radar given its known value. The Army Air Forces responded to this request three weeks later, as described in this January 6, 1945 memo. The modification centers are 100% occupied in B-29 conversions. B-29s get top priority in fitting Eagle radars. Sorry. Eagle-equipped bombers were never deployed in the European theater. Let's now compare the combat effectiveness of B-29s conducting night raids with targets sighted with the APQ-13 versus the APQ-7 radar. With a combat efficiency or effectiveness of a bomber is defined as the tonnage of bombs striking the target divided by bomber losses, as defined in this 1944 SINPAC Black Intelligence document. The numerator will be defined as bombs striking within 2,000 feet of the aim point, and the denominator will be bomber losses from all causes while on the bombing mission. 
collecting these parameters for night incendiary missions where the target was sighted with the APQ-13 radar. B-29s dropped 24,335 tons of incendiary bombs at night during March, April, and May 1945 at a loss of 89 bombers from a June 1945 21st Bomber Command monthly activity report. 15% of these bombs fell within 2,000 feet of the aim point, as defined on this table from an August 1945 20th Air Force's Command and Staff Reference Book. The APQ-13 equipped B-29's combat effectiveness equates to 41 tons per every bomber lost. Repeating the calculations for the APQ-7 equipped B-29's. B-29's drop 9,009 tons of bombs, placing 30% within 2,000 feet of the aim point for a loss of three bombers. The APQ-7 equipped B-29's combat effectiveness is 901 tons per bomber lost. The APQ-7 equipped B-29s are 22 times more combat effective than the APQ-13 equipped B-29s. The 8th Air Forces recognize the potential of the Eagle radar systems, which is why they requested their bombers should be equipped with the APQ-7 ASAP. If you've enjoyed this APQ-7 radar combat effectiveness deep dive review and found it informative and interesting, please consider supporting the channel by liking, commenting, and or subscribing to World War II U.S. Bombers.